There is a Chinese legend that says that there is a great dragon that lived in the far south of the Celestial Empire, and this dragon had long eyelashes until it formed a plant with very large therapeutic properties. People decided to call this plant, tea. Over time, this plant became famous, so a group of people called the White Magicians were allocated, and their role was to take care of the eyelashes of the dragon in order to preserve the therapeutic properties of the tea. The dragon makes a necklace and gives it to the chief magician. He also made him rule over his own lands and made his daughter the princess. The tea was famous worldwide and was exported to many countries in the world. Because of that, the chief magician was able to create a great fortune in gold, and he used it to develop his people and to alleviate their suffering. But a group of magicians became greedy and decided to control the dragon. The leader of the sorcerers was a woman, and she was able to prepare a huge army, and she attacked the dragon cave and was able to seize it in order to ensure her control over the tea and to export it at a higher price. She ordered her soldiers not to cut the dragon's eyelashes. Because of what she had done, the dragon fell into a deep slumber. When the chief white magician and his soldiers moved to liberate the dragon, a violent war occurred, which ended with the arrest of the chief magician and his daughter, the princess, and they were imprisoned in different parts of the world. We go to the Tower of London prison and watch the guards treat the prisoners very badly. We see the prison warden, who is called Hook, entering the cell in which three people are present in order to give them food. It was clear that the prisoners were very dangerous because they were chained to the ceiling. We notice that one of the prisoners had an iron mask on his face so that no one could identify him. As for the second prisoner, he bore Asian features. The third prisoner seems to be insane. The masked man takes the food and puts it on the window, then a crow comes to eat, but he pushes it away. A crow's feather falls, and the Asian man takes it. Then a homing bird enters and the masked man grabs it and takes a letter from it. But he did not understand anything from the message, so he gave it to the Asian man. He tells him that the message is written backwards and that he has to put the message on a mirror or water in order to be able to read it. He pours water on the ground and then the masked man reads the message. He discovers that the person who sent the letter sent it to his girlfriend, Miss Dudley, and the person who sent the message is called Green. He apologizes to her for running away from England, because her father, Lord Dudley, had sent the guards to get rid of him because he saw them in the bedroom together. And he tells her that he spent his wealth in order to invent a wheel in his cart through which he can draw maps in a professional way, and because of the fame of his invention, the Russian Tsar decided to give him the task of drawing a map of the borders of his kingdom from Europe, but his journey to draw the map was very difficult because he faced very savage and strange creatures. And he almost died more than once because of these creatures, but he was able to reach Moscow safely, and he had with him the map of the Russian Tsar. But the strange thing is that when he enters to give him the map, he finds another person, and he says that he is not the great Caesar Peter, and because of what he said, he is put in prison. And he tells her at the end of the message that this is the last message he will send to her because he no longer has a homing bird. Then the masked man says that he is Peter's Caesar and that he must help Green. He takes the feather from the Asian man and writes a message on the back of Green's message, and he ties it to the homing bird's leg and sends it. We go to Lord Dudley's palace and see Miss Dudley practicing archery, and then a homing bird reaches her. She catches it and reads the message. The next day, she takes the letter to her father, telling him that her boyfriend is in trouble and that he must intervene to save him. But he refuses. She tells him that Green is the father of her child and that he must intervene. After that, he agrees to help him and takes the letter to read it, but he watches the letter that Tsar Peter wrote, telling him that his place is in Russia and not in a prison in London. Lord Dudley decides to send a message to the British ambassador to Russia to get Green out of prison. We see Green, who was in a quarrel with the Russian soldiers in order to save a Chinese youth, but the guards take the young man to beat him, and they threaten Green that if he tries to intervene, they will get rid of him. At the same time, the British ambassador to Russia arrives to free Green from prison. He also gave him a cage with a homing bird to use to send messages. The Russian minister gives him a mission, which was to draw a map of the eastern borders of the Russian Empire. He also gives him a bag full of money and threatens him that if he returns to England again or says about what he saw here, he will be disposed of. But Green asked to take the Chinese youth with him. The minister agrees to his request. When he gets on the cart, he asks the Chinese guy his name. He tells him his name is Qin Lan. He tells him that he is going to the east and asks him to come with him. Qing Lan also wanted to go to the east, but he asked to ride on top of the carriage, and Green agreed. During their journey, 
bandits come to them and try to get rid of them, but Cheng Lan gets into a violent fight with them and manages to get rid of them. A little genie gets out of the cart and fights off the bandits. After they manage to get rid of the bandits, Green decides to take the genie with them to China. After that, he writes a letter to his beloved, asking her to take advantage of her father's influence in order to find Caesar Peter, because there is a plot being plotted against him. When the letter reaches her, she makes sure that the one who wrote the letter is the real Caesar Peter. So she goes to the prison. When she gets to the prison she meets the prison warden. He asks her what she wants. She tells him that she believes Caesar Peter is imprisoned in this prison. He tells her that this is impossible because there are no kings or Caesars in prison. He tells her that there is a Russian person in prison because he turned out to be a spy. He takes her to him to meet him. When the insane prisoner saw her, he began to speak incomprehensibly. She asks the warden to leave her alone with the prisoners. She starts reading the letter Green sent her and mentions Qin Lan's name. The Asian man tells her that Qin Lan is his daughter and he tells her that he is the ruler of China and Qin Lan is the princess. He asks her to keep the prison gate open for as long as possible. Meanwhile, she notices that the insane prisoner has passed away. Then the prison warden comes and sees the body and asks the guards to take him out. The guards enter and remove the chains from the dead man, and by mistake they also remove the chains of the chief magician. He beats them and manages to eliminate them. After that, he frees himself as well as the great Caesar Peter, and they escape. They are also freeing the rest of the prisoners. After that, the chief magician goes to the warden's office to get his own necklace. As for Caesar Peter, he enters into a duel with one of the guards. We see Miss Dudley riding the carriage and asking the driver to stay on the bridge so that the prison door will remain open for as long as possible. After the chief magician brings his necklace, he and Caesar Peter run towards the prison gate. On their way out, they break the chain that binds them together. But the prison warden grabs the chain in the hand of the chief magician and pulls him. He gives the necklace to Tsar Peter and asks him to give it to his daughter. He asks him how he knows her. He tells him that this necklace is magical and it will guide him to the location of his daughter. Tsar Peter can escape by chariot. The warden of the prison can imprison the chief magician. Tsar Peter boards a Russian ship heading to China. Miss Dudley decides to go with him, so she seduces the assistant captain and can hit him and take his clothes and enter the ship. The next day, Tsar Peter goes out to the deck of the ship and tells the Russians that he is the real Tsar Peter. But they did not believe him because he was wearing an iron mask. Miss Dudley, who was disguised as the assistant captain, beats him up. She orders them to lock him up. The captain of the ship discovers that there is a girl in the ship, so he orders them to search for the girl. She was trying to hide but they found her and tried to assault her. After that, she goes and frees Caesar Peter in order to protect her, and indeed he managed to save her. After that, the ship enters a storm, and the captain of the ship hides, so Caesar Peter takes over the duties of commanding the ship and is able to lead it safely. After that, they find the captain of the ship hiding, and they imprison him. They also knew that the real Caesar Peter was the one with them on the ship. After that, Green and Qing Lan arrive in China after a long and tiring journey, but they see clouds over the dragon cave, and there were walls surrounding the city. They also saw soldiers cruelly treating the peasants. She tells him that they should help them, but he asks her to take a break in the carriage so that they can then go to the port and return to England. But she decided to save them because she is the legitimate princess of the country. She goes and climbs the city walls. She saw people getting upset with her because they thought she was the one doing the high taxes. She witnessed the injustice of the soldiers and their bad treatment of people, and how they took high taxes from them. After that, some rebels attacked the soldiers, but the soldiers managed to beat them up. Qin Lan manages to catch the witch's assistant, who turns out to be one of the white magicians, but betrayed them. After that, one of the soldiers makes a very loud, annoying sound. So the witch's assistant runs away. Then a rebel girl attacks Qing Lan because she thinks she is the one who ordered the soldiers to do so. But she tells her that she has been in a Russian prison for a long time. Green is surprised that soldiers carry his carriage and take it to the royal palace. The witch's assistant goes and tells her that he has seen the real queen. She gets angry and tells him to prepare the prisoners so that the dragon can punish them in front of everyone's eyes. After that, the witch wears a mask that transforms her form into a princess, and then she goes to meet Green. He tells her that he is a geographer and makes maps, and shows her part of his work. She was impressed by his work and asked him to draw a map of her kingdom as well as the surrounding areas of the kingdom in order to expand the tea trade. 
He tells her that she looks like his assistant Qing Lan and asks if they are related. She asks him to come with her to show him the dragon. After that, the witch comes out wearing the mask of Princess Qing Lan. The real princess was watching what was happening. Then the genie comes to her and gives her a telescope and tells her to see Green, who was near the witch. She sends him a message and tells him that he is in danger, and she asks him to draw a map of the city and the palace so that she can save him. He tells the witch that he will start drawing the map from today. After that, she gives a signal to the dragon to come out, and the dragon electrifies the prisoners. The next day, Caesar Peter and Miss Dudley arrive in China. He tells them that he has come to buy all the tea, so they let him in. He takes the necklace out of his pocket and shows it to the sellers. A young girl sees the necklace and goes to Qing Lai and tells her what she saw. Green discovers that the witch uses science, not magic. Qing Lan is able to kidnap Caesar Peter and ask him about the necklace he has. But Miss Dudley comes from behind her and threatens her with the weapon and asks her to leave him. He asks her to talk about herself. She tells him her name and tells him that she returned to China with the help of a geographer named Green. Suddenly the rebels come out and catch them. After that, Green is arrested because he entered their laboratory. The witch decides to execute him so that Qin Lan turns herself in and takes the dragon necklace from her. But the genie can take the map that Green drew and give it to Qin Lan. Caesar Peter tells her that he was imprisoned with her father in a prison in London and that he was the one who asked him to give her the necklace. After that the genie comes and gives her the map. Then Caesar Peter and Qin Lan hatch a plan to storm the palace. After that Caesar Peter goes with Miss Dudley to the palace to meet the witch. Per the witch, she asks to speak to him privately. Miss Dudley watches Green tied up and screams that he is her husband. The soldiers catch her with the sailors in order to execute her with him. We see Caesar Peter sitting with the witch who offers him a drink. We also see three people storming the dragon cave and discovering that the dragon is fake and not real. Qing Lan is trying to find the real dragon so that she can restore her throne. The people who broke into the dragon cave are arrested because the number of soldiers in the cave was too many. The captain of the ship manages to free them and they attack the soldiers. And then they're editing Miss Dudley and Green. The rebels attack the palace according to the plan they agreed upon in advance. The rebels succeed in entering the palace. The magicians try to electrify the rebels. But the rebels manage to destroy the factory, so the magicians fall to the ground and it turns out that they use machines to delude others that they are magicians. We find out that the witch poisoned Caesar Peter. She tries to take the necklace from him, but he wakes up and tells her that he is not affected by any poison. Qin Lan frees the dragon using the necklace. We also see the chief magician being freed from chains. One of the soldiers manages to catch Caesar Peter, and the witch tells her assistant to collect gold in order to escape. But one of the soldiers comes and tells them that this is not the real princess. But she gets rid of the soldier and her assistant and manages to escape. The dragon comes out and collides with the balloon that the witch is running away with. The witch falls from the balloon. She gets into a fight with Qin Lan, but the witch maids are able to defeat Qin Lan. The witch takes the necklace and gets rid of the maids. The rebels enter, but they don't know who the real princess is. The genie can recognize Qin Lan. The witch stabs Green, and then she tries to control the dragon through the necklace, but the genie takes the necklace from her. She throws a knife at him and he and the necklace fall. The two jump, and the real princess can catch the genie, while the witch holds the necklace, but she falls and dies. Miss Dudley sends a letter to her father asking him to free the chief magician from prison. The movie ends and we see the chief magician saying that the necklace does not control the dragon, but the dragon helps the righteous people.